Hi, my name is Samantha Ryder. I live right here in Spearfish, South Dakota. I'm a Black Hill State University student, a volunteer at Western Hills Humane Society, and a full-time worker. Many things fascinate me about small towns. Join me while we take a closer look into our own backyard. Come on out and meet me downtown, Spearfish style. Hey guys, I'm your host Samantha Ryder for KBHU's TV's Meet Me Downtown Spearfish Style. Today we're going to be taking a closer look into some of the more original businesses here in Spearfish, including the DC Booth Fish Hatchery. Now something does seem a little fishy about this place. Can't seem to put my finger on it. Let's take a closer look. It is a wonderful place for a short visit. We have the National Archives for Fisheries from all uh, over the entire United States. So we have 1.8 million archived items in storage here and we have some of those things on show in the museum. For people walking across the bridge into the magical land of the hatchery, first you will find trout and we have four different types of trout that are in the different ponds that are in the area. Um, walking down the steps into the underground viewing area, there will be signage that explains up, and there are also dispensers of fish food. So for the quarters, you can drop in, get a handful of food, and watch the trout um, scurry to find their feeding. Four kinds of trout that we have here at the hatchery are the rainbow the brown, the brook, and the cutthroat. And the rainbow are most easily recognized uh, because of their color patterns. And they can be seen in the underwater viewing very easily. Uh, in the summer, we're very visible on the grounds. We have volunteers that are working in each of the venues, giving, uh, giving tours, answering questions, and talking about the history um, aspects of fisheries that we have showcased here at the hatchery. Oh, one of the most fun things about that is is the multi-generational aspect mm -hmm. that you run into all the time. You will run into grandparents that are here with grandkids and they talk about how they came when they were children on family vacations and now they're bringing their grandkids. We have adults that say that they came as children with their parents and now they want to be sure to bring their kids to have that same experience that they remember from their childhood. So we really notice a lot of multi-generational uh, from past years and making our memories today. That is absolutely the most fun part about working here at the hatchery is watching the hands of children dropping the, the fish food into the water and watching the fish and the trout coming up too. The giggles, the happiness, um, ask for more food. Uh, th that's just all a really great thing. And also lots of pictures, lots of family uh, interactions and just lots of excitement. <laughs> so the favorite, one of my favorite parts is, is all meeting all the people that you meet on the grounds. We have people come from all over the world and last year in 2018 we have documented people that signed their names in our books from all the different states in the United States plus 16 foreign countries. At the hatchery here the federal agency of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife actually handle the, the trout and raising and stocking the fish that are here in the raceways and in the ponds. So they buy them, they purchase them at fingerling size which is about the size you know, of your fingers across. And then they grow them and feed them and stock them um, out. So we don't actually hatch from eggs here uh, as had been done in the beginning of the turn of the century, but they, we do raise them and, and stock them. Fish isn't the only thing you'll be able to see at the DC Booth Fish Hatchery. We have several different types of species of animals and birds and 
things around the um, on the grounds. Uh, we do have bull snakes that we've had out um, sunning recently. Deer are around. We have we have squirrels. We have the wild turkeys. Just a wide variety of different animals that you may run into while you're on the grounds. We offer a very hearty welcome to anyone that would like to cross into or onto the grounds and take a look around, um, spend a few hours, spend a half hour, spend whatever time you have. Uh, just relax and enjoy and take, a, take part in all of the learning and educational things that we have here. If you enjoy doing artsy things and have a free day, stop by Mad Platter Paint Your Own Pottery Studio in Spearfish for a neat treat. The Mad Platter is a Patreon pottery studio. We have um, hundreds of different pottery pieces that you can come in, choose, they're ready to paint. We charge a sitting fee plus the cost of the pottery. Um, you sit down, spend your time, paint what it is you want on there. I'll teach you techniques if you'd like. And then um, you leave it with me for about seven days and then I fire it. We have functional pieces. So there is mugs and plates and platters and bowls, things you can use in your everyday life. They are food safe. Um, after I glaze and fire them and then we also have you know decorative pieces so we have plaques and, and little animals and tea, tea sets and teapots that you would use for decorations in your home. So my paints are all called under glazes. I have two different types of paints in the studio. I have one set which is my specialty glazes and one set which are called fun strokes so they're all under glazes. My specialty glazes you have to do four coats and cover the entire piece completely otherwise it's not food safe and it's not shiny. The glazes inside the bottle I actually don't glass glaze those ones. Those can go straight from the customer's table to the kiln without um, me dipping them. My other glazes, the fun strokes, um, those ones you have to do three coats in order to get a solid color. Uh, you can do multiple coats on top of each other, so three coats on top of three coats will create a layered look and give you some design on top of that. And then uh, after the customer is done painting them, I, I do have to glass glaze those ones in order to be food safe and shiny. And then we have tons of different additives to help you design or to create on your piece. We've got stamps and stencils and silk screens and stickers and tape. Um, there's also a few techniques I can teach you when you come in here. We do bubbles, stuff with shaving cream, lace, um, those are the three that you have to ask and then I'll just kind of help you with them. So I closed every Monday, Tuesday. Um, I do the kiln every Monday. I come in on a Monday morning and load, glaze and load the kiln and it takes 30 hours from start to finish to fire. So that way on Wednesday when I open the shop back up, it's finished and I can unload it. So we wait for our, lo our kiln load to be full enough to fire it because of how much energy it sucks up. So um, usually it takes a week to get a full kiln. Sometimes I'm doing two in a week depending on how busy we are. During the winter I do more kiln loans than I do during the summer. But we have everybody's, all the customers pieces back there. Once I get a full load I have to mix up the glass glaze and then I have to dip every single piece twice because you can only dip half at a time. And so that takes about an hour to do an entire load. And then once that's done, I load up the kiln where I stilt everything. Everything is on little little stilts so they don't fuse to the bottom of my machine. And then um, once I have it completely full, it's like Tetris. You have different shelves you can put on there, different sizes, and you're trying to fit as many pieces as possible without them touching, because if they're touching, they're gonna fuse together. But after I get it loaded, I shut the kiln, I turn my exhaust fan on, which makes it so all of the heat and excess goes out the building rather than sits right in here. And um, I just push review and review. You just make sure that your temperature is the correct setting, your hold is the correct setting, your alarm is off, and um, make sure everything's right and then push start and it just does what it needs to do. It's all electric, so it's it takes 15 hours to get to 1,828 degrees and then about 15 hours to cool back down to room temperature. So usually it's about 65 to 72 degrees in here. And then once it hits that amount, you're able to open it and touch the pieces, knock off the stilt, sand down the little stilt marks so that people don't get glass shards in their fingers and then um, you wrap them up and call the customers and they can get their pieces. It's, it's quite a long process. I'd say from start to finish with the kiln, 
loading and me getting them wrapped it's, it's about three day process um i think the coolest fact about this business is um it's a retail business but it's busy season is during the winter time and it's slow season is during the summertime. Any other retail business you talk to, it's the complete opposite. Summer is their busy season, winter is their slow season. Um, they depend on those tourists to keep them going in the summer so they can make it through the winter. Um, I depend on my locals coming in during the winter time and, and doing something in here to get me through that tourist season where most people are enjoying the outdoors. You might have noticed a certain theme around mad platters. Um, Alice in Wonderland. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't chosen by us. It was a pre-existing pottery place, like I said. Um, it was already Alice in Wonderland themed, which I was absolutely okay with because I love Alice in Wonderland. Next time you're looking for something creative to do, stop by Mad Platters Paint Your Own Pottery for an unforgettable experience. Hi, my name is Whitney here at Zero Gravity and Spearfish. Um, I am a float enthusiast or a float operator here. Whether you're here on vacation, or perhaps you just need to escape from your daily life, Zero Gravity is the place to be for a relaxing session. First of all, here at Zero Gravity, we have two sensory deprivation tanks. Um, each tank has about 1,200 pounds of medical grade Epsom salt infused in 300 gallons of water. Um, so the big question we get with people all the time is, oh my gosh, 300 gallons of water, it's gotta be deep. It's not. Um, so the water's only 11 inches. So the trick with the whole 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt is that it creates a zero gravity environment. So what that means is when you lay in the water, it automatically makes you buoyant. So our water buoyancy is higher than what the average human body is. So no matter if you've never floated a day in your life, it doesn't matter, you'll automatically float. It's like the Dead Sea, only locally here in Spearfish. But, uh, so we have what's called um, float cabin suites. Um, <clears throat> And these ones are pretty much the most customizable float cabins you can get. Um, so there's two types of floating. There's sensory deprivation, which is no lights, no sound. That is fantastic for those people who are super stressed. Um, you know, throughout a daily life, everybody has to listen to the phones ring, the dogs barking, your boss is telling you what to do, your kids are screaming, you know, cars are honking. <clears throat> so sensory deprivation takes all of that away from you. So it's just you, yourself, you're in a very quiet place. You can just think about what you need to or not think at all. So, <laughs> and if you're kind of like not a big fan of the dark or if that makes you nervous, then there's always um, kind of standard flotation therapy, which is lights and or music. Um, so here at Zero Gravity, we try and make everything, like I keep saying, as customizable as possible. Um, so you can play your own music. <clears throat> um, like me personally, I have an app on my phone and it plays really calming music, so I'll plug that in. Um, otherwise, we provide music for you or you can kind of listen to the standard kind of zen track that's already built into the tank. Um, same thing with light color, um, you can have the lights on or off. Like I said, that's kind of part of the, the sensory deprivation or float therapy. You can pick any color. We have the entire color gradient. Um, so if you want Marilyn Monroe lipstick red, or if you want dark abyss blue, like we have everything in between. Um, um, so also here at Zero Gravity, we have an infrared sauna, which is kind of what's next to me here. Um, so that goes anywhere between 120 degrees to 140. Um, recommended time for that is 30 minutes. And what this does is it heats you up from the inside out. So <clears throat> like a traditional sweat sauna, that's when you have your rocks and the steam and you, you know, it's very humid, muggy almost. This, on the other hand, this is a dry heat. So this is kind of like being out in the desert. <clears throat> And the reason that this is super beneficial is because it warms you up from the inside out. So it's fantastic for like kickstarting a detox. It's fantastic for your metabolism boosting. It's fantastic for overall like skin purification. It's fantastic. Um, people have noticed a huge difference with eczema. And then on top of that, anybody, um, well not anybody, we've had a lot of people with like lupus and fibromyalgia and stuff like that. They've come through here and they've noticed a huge difference too. So, and then this one too, since we love music, and lights, um, you can change the light color by this little. So you just click it and it's chromotherapy. Um, so the, the education behind the light. Um, so a lot of people have seasonal depression, especially in this area. And a lot of people spend their time going to a tanning booth because it, the, the lights from a tanning booth help with the seasonal depression. But 
it's not healthy for you because you're getting your UVA and UVB lights. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of having to go into a tanning bed and like cook your skin, we have this here to where you, you're sitting in the sauna, you're warming yourself up, but each light kind of specifies something different. So like this deep blue light I know is for the nervous system. Um, the pink light, I'm pretty positive. That one is for like the anxiety, depression aspect of everything. Um, the red light, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but that's her most popular light. So I'm assuming that one is like, um, I want to say that one's like a, your your circulatory system, if I remember correctly. Um, but anyways, so you can customize, pick lights for different things. Um, we also have like a music player in there, so you can plug music in again and listen to it while you sweat. Um, and then other than, so we have our two flow tanks, we have um, our infrared sauna, and then we have four massage therapists in two rooms. Um, and each one kind of does... They specialize in different things. Gosh, and then we have our oxygen bar, um, which is a huge hit for the college kids, especially on Sunday mornings when everybody's hungover and they want to die. Um, <clears throat> so what the oxygen bar is, is it's 95% pure oxygen, but it's flavored. So it's not like that hospital oxygen. You know what I mean? This is at least fun, even though you have to wear a nose hose. So you take your nose hose, you place it up your nose, you wrap it around your ears so that the little tube part comes out here. We plug you in and then there's four different flavors on each one of the oxygen bars. Um, that way you can kind of decide what flavors you like. Um, like this morning, I've been living on the eucalyptus one because I have a head cold um, and it's done wonders for my sinuses. Um, other than that, there's some scents that are more calming like lavender tangerine. There's some that are more exhilarating like we have a mango one. Um, and what it does is it basically increases the amount of oxygen you have in your blood, which increases your energy. Um, so it's great for people who have like cluster headaches, migraines, um, concussions. We've actually seen a lot of people that have come through with concussions and it's, it's, I can't, I mean, I can't scientifically tell you that it's, you know, fixed their concussion or whatever mm -hmm. it be. But I mean, these people have come in and they've noticed a huge difference from when they first got their concussion to being on like a regiment so they would come in every day for 20 minutes and do oxygen <clears throat> and they'd notice their recovery and like their doctors were even like hey things are going well and they're like <laughs> since their opening zero gravity has helped many people with their challenges um ptsd depression anxiety i mean you name it and people come in here and you can just look at their face you know and they're just miserable and they're like oh well, i'm hoping to get a little bit of pain relief and usually people are really humble about it too well, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of looking to see what my options are. I just haven't been feeling good. But, like, you look at them and you just know that they don't, they're not okay. Um, and you're like, yeah, you know what, let's get you set up for the tank. We'll have you tested out. You know, we'll, we make sure we give everybody the rundown, you know, get them into the tank. They come out and I can't tell you, like, Jess has had one lady in particular. She had fibromyalgia so bad. <clears throat> like, this woman couldn't even hug her family. Like, her cat couldn't sit in her lap and she came out of the tank and she's just falling and she's hugging Jess and she's like, oh my God, thank you so much, thank you. I haven't felt this good forever, you know? And it's just, it's, and like, that's why we're here. It's so crazy that this is like a universal place where we can heal ourselves and we can get better, but we also can offer that to the community to come here and do that. Bent Willow Design is the floral shop within Spearfish that can help you find the perfect flower or a perfect treasure for the ones you love. I'm Cynthia, owner and floral designer of Bent Willow Designs. This is a floral shop. I have fresh flowers, I have home decor, greeting cards, plants, succulents, anything you need for a gift. Um, as a kid, I've always loved flowers. Um, my first job at 14 was a flower shop. I helped deliver flowers after school. Um, and then as time has gone on, they, it has just become my passion. And I'm from Spearfish. I was born and raised here. Um, both my parents were raised here. We all graduated from Spearfish High School. Um, so I've always loved Spearfish. It's my hometown. And being on Main Street is just a privilege because it's where I grew up and mm -hmm. I shopped downtown when we were younger. So it's really great to be on Main Street in a good mood. Two 
Tuesdays and Thursdays, I get fresh flowers in. So every week, all of my arrangements are fresh and I make them myself. So they are always coming in and going out. Mm -hmm. No, I just like getting in unique pieces, different things for gift items. Um, I could use it for a silk arrangement, fresh arrangement, or just a home decor piece, whichever anybody would like. I don't know if I would really call it a mascot, but I do have, if anybody ever notices, on my delivery car, there's a star on the back of it so that it's Wonder Woman approved. I just love what I do. I love everything about what I do, from prom to weddings to funerals to babies to birthdays. I enjoy it all. I like bringing smiles to people's faces and the emotion that flower gives people is pretty special. If you're interested in looking into more of the cultural side of Spearfish, Matthews Opera House and Art Center will be the best place to visit. I would say the Matthews Opera House and Art Center is the the artistic hub of Spearfish. That's what we hope to be, is we hope to really be the heart. We want to promote um, fine art, we want to promote um, sculpture, painting, any of those things, visual arts, but then on the other side of that, we also want to make sure that our performing artists in Spearfish have a space to um, put on community theater shows, um, that our young um, actors have a place to do children's theater, um, and then that we have a space where we can bring in acts from all around the world, musical acts, theater acts, um, to just enrich the culture and the arts here in Spearfish, South Dakota. Since its opening in the year 1906, Matthews Opera House has had a rich history within Spearfish. Well, originally, it was a cattle driver who would um, this was the stopping point of the cattle driving, and I think the rumor is that his wife was like, wish there was something to do when we got to the end of the cattle drive trip. And so she talked them into building a silent movie place. And so that's what this opera house was originally for. And then it's, you know, had a number of years where it hasn't been used, and then it was revamped up in 1985. And since 85 till the present time, it's been the kind of art center. So it went from a um, silent movie theater to kind of just a, a almost like a hangout spot for some of the old actors, like during the original days of like Phantom of the Matthews. And then in 85, it really kind of, well, yeah, from 56 through 85, there was the kind of revamp period. And then from 85 till now, it's been what it is. And it's been the center of the arts in Spearfish and really the Black Hills for a long time. Well, you know, I think that currently a big goal of ours is um, we really want to make the Matthews a, a community-wide place. You know, I think that there's a thing, a connotation to the building that it's for an older audience just because of the fact that it's an opera house and we do musicals and, um, and it's a delicate gallery. But we really want to separate these lines and make it for everybody, you know, from little kids to adults and everything in between. And I think one area that we're really focusing on right now is getting more college student involvement. I'm a prime example. I didn't step foot in this building until my internship. And I look back and realize all the opportunities that I missed out on. And so I think a big goal of ours right now is a center for everybody. You know, we want a really diverse, strong audience and just showing everybody that, that art is truly for everybody. And we all firmly stand behind this, that there is something in the arts world that could be for anybody, you know? Um, and so I think it's our job to find those programs and events that hits every demographic and every group. So, yeah. In the theater itself, we have a subscription series every year where we bring in musical artists, um, performing theatrical groups from around the world, and then also our community theater, which our community theater does three shows a year. And so just between subscription series and our community theater, um, that in and of itself is about eight shows. We also have a children's theater program that performs in the summer. Um, and then we also do jazz series and other just kind of 
one-off uh, events in our theater um, that we'll promote throughout the year. So there's really always something going on in our theater. As far as the gallery is concerned, we switch out exhibits all the time. Um, and so come, sometimes you'll see our, our Black Hills artists being featured, but then sometimes we'll have a special exhibit um, where we'll do a call for artists for a specific theme. And then every year we always do our community art show, which is a really awesome opportunity, not only for community artists to be featured in our gallery, but for the community as a whole to see the amazing talented people that are a part of Spearfish. Um, so that's probably our main gallery events that we have. And and then in terms of the other events that we have going on, aside from both the visual and performing arts, is our community-based events. Um, so we have the Holiday High Tea. Uh, it's a chance to, it's kind of just like a fancy tea that we do, and it's a, it's a fundraiser, and it's during Christmas. Uh, you, people get dressed up. You can design the tables. It's just a really fun kind of... Uh, proper event that we do. Um, aside from that, uh, we have the Big Read event that's every other year. That's a three-month program we do with the National Endowment for the Arts and Arts Midwest, where we take one book and we base three months of programming around that one book. And that's a partnership with the Matthews Opera House, Black Hill State, and the Grace Bollock Memorial Library. And then our kind of culminating event that we're just now getting off of is Festival in the Park. And that is uh, far and away our largest event. Uh, you know, it's 20,000 people in and out the three days. It's a celebration of arts, crafts, food, and, and music. So those are kind of our our main events outside of the Opera House. The only thing I think that we have as a mascot um, is the Phantom of yeah. the Matthews Opera House, Ooh, which alleged. we have a summer show um, that was written in the 70s by um, local author Paul Higby. Um, and that we perform that every single summer, but that is based on that legend. And so if you come to one of our shows or if you're here in the evening, maybe sometime you'll see the phantom although we've heard that the phantom is friendly so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably the closest thing we have to a mascot yeah. so what is the most interesting fact about the matthews opera house and arts center allegedly it is haunted there have been yeah. you, you can speak more to that yeah we've even had some ghost tour groups come in once again this was before megan and i were here but um i believe it was through the travel channel but supposedly right up there and then a guy who used to play piano right to the, the right of the stage. So those are the two um, alleged stories. of, And almost every former employee has confirmed this, but our current staff cannot. So the mystery is still out there. That's a wrap for the first episode of Meet Me Downtown Spearfish Style. I'm your host, Samantha Ryder, and I look forward to seeing you again. Oh, and by the way, keep an eye out for these businesses that we've talked about today on your social media channels. See you next time.